The main character of the Netflix Spanish series The Snow Girl is Amaya Martin, who is abducted while participating in the Twelfth Night Parade with her parents Ana and Lavero. As a result of her personal interest in the case, Myron Rojo, an intern at the Diario Sur newspaper in Malaga, sets out to track down the kidnappers. She occasionally works with police officer Bielan Millen to help the heartbroken parents find Amaya. The series, which was originally named La Chica de Neve, concludes with surprising information about Amaya's past and present. You've come to the right place if you want to learn more about the thriller series's conclusion. Spoilers ahead. Amaya vanishes in the first scene of The Snow Girl when revelers are watching the Twelfth Night Parade. While Ana and Lavero look for their daughter, they are unsuccessful in their search. As an intern at Diario Sur, Myron Rojo is obliged to handle less important issues, but she persuades her professor and senior journalist Eduardo to involve her in the coverage of Amaya's missing person case. Bielan Millen, who is in charge of the police investigation into the young girl's disappearance, is surprised that there hasn't been a ransom demand. Only Amaya's yellow jacket, which is discovered in an adjacent apartment building, provides Millen with an immediate lead. In 2016, six years after the kidnapping of Amaya, Myron receives a VCR tape with a message that instructs her to share it with the parents of the missing girl. Myron, Anna, Alvaro, and Millen watch the tape and get assured that Amaya is alive. Soon after Amaya's disappearance, Millen's investigation leads to Anna and Alvaro's neighbor and family friend David Luke. Although David has an alibi on the night of Amaya's disappearance, Millen and her team conduct a search in an apartment that belongs to the Luke family. They find several CDs of child only for the police officer to realize that David and his son Samuel are racists. Upon realizing that the police have found the truth about him, Samuel kills himself. Both Myron and Millen look for the person who captured the VCR tape in 2016. A tech analyst uses the same features to identify the specific model, which directs them to James Foster, who has a history of abusing children. Despite being taken into prison by Millen, he escapes quickly since he also has a plausible explanation. When Myron approaches him, he informs her that he is aware of her because it was documented and posted on the child pornography website slide. Foster demands $10,000 from Myron in exchange for the user and administrator list of the website, which will be necessary for her to identify the perpetrator of the rape. In 2019, nine years after Amaya's disappearance, Myron gets the second VCR tape with a text that translates to, goodbye. Anna and Alvaro get worried that the kidnappers will stop reaching out to them to cut ties between them and their daughter. While the two of them immerse in unceasing grief, Myron makes a discovery concerning the particular VCR model that was used to record the two videotapes. Who kidnapped Amaya Martin? Why? Myron compares the first and second VCR tapes and discovers that even though both were made using the identical equipment, the second one has far superior quality. The reporter visits numerous stores that still offer VCR repairs and learns that Iris Molina, a woman, just completed a similar model repair. Amaya is taken hostage by Iris and her husband Santiago during the Twelfth Night Parade. Iris is Ana's patient at the moment. She believes her life has been cursed when Ana informs her that she cannot become pregnant. Her and Santiago's hearts are broken by Ana's admission as a couple who have been eagerly awaiting a child. Iris and Santiago come into Amaya, who is separated from her parents, during the parade. While Ana and Lavero look for Amaya, Ana decides to abduct the small girl because her desire to become a mother overrides her morality. Santiago always supports and follows his wife. Iris makes the decision to raise Amaya as her own daughter in order to satisfy her dream because she is unable to become pregnant and live a mother's life on her own. Although Santiago initially displays misgivings about it, he soon comes to terms with being a father. In contrast, Amaya initially maintains that Ana is not her mother. Iris quickly convinces the young girl to change her viewpoint when she starts referring to her as Julia. Gradually, Ana and Alvaro's Amaya transforms into Iris and Santiago's Julia mentally and emotionally. They teach Julia that the world around them is filled with bad men, and she shouldn't trust anyone but her mother and father. Whenever someone visits the couple, Julia runs to her room in fear of the bad men, who are capable of hurting her immensely as per her beliefs. Iris succeeds in nurturing panic and fear in Julia enormously, which ultimately kills her memories of her real parents. Since Iris and Santiago are the only human beings Julia knows, she ends up trusting them. She becomes Iris's daughter in every way possible, fulfilling the latter's desire to become a mother. In order to harm Ana and Lavero, Iris and Santiago do not kidnap Amaya. They are so moved by the struggles and sorrow of the latter marriage that they send a VCR tape to the parents. 
In an effort to lessen their suffering, Iris and Santiago want the parents of their daughter to know that she is secure. Does Amaya return to Ana and Lavero? Despite Iris's nine-year success in passing off Amaya as her daughter Julia, she makes a blunder that reveals her true identity to Myron. Knowing about the VCR repair, the journalist visits Amaya's home in search of Amaya. It doesn't take long for Iris to understand the real intentions of Myron's arrival, which makes her run away from her house. When she realizes that she cannot hide Amaya anymore, she decides to kill herself and the girl by driving her van to a slope. Even though her attempt kills Iris, Amaya survives the same, and the authorities admit her to a care center. Millen lets Anna and Alvaro know that Amaya and Julia's fingerprints have matched as she ensures that the girl is indeed their daughter. The police confirm that Julia is Amaya, therefore Anna and Lazaro do have their daughter back. However, in Amaya's eyes, she is Julia, Iris and Santiago's daughter. Amaya does not only not recognize her biological parents when they come to pick her up from the care facility, she also does not respond when they address her by her first name, Amaya. She only replies to her parents when they address her as Julia, showing that they haven't been able to restore her daughter's mental and emotional health. Anna and Lavero might not even be able to undo their daughter's learnings and beliefs, given that Iris drove the kid to adopt the identity of Julia and develop a distrust of outsiders. With the help of prestigious mental health professionals, Anna and Alvaro may try to regain their Amaya, but such a process may overwhelm the girl, who already had to endure a similar process to transform into Julia. Furthermore, Anna and Alvaro may accept their daughter as Julia and try to open a new chapter of her life without forcing her past on her. After nine years of their daughter's disappearance, Anna and Alvaro may haven't even expected to reunite with her. Since that happens, they may find happiness in accepting Julia as well. Who killed David Luke and James Foster? Why? As Millen's inquiry into Amaya's disappearance moves further, she finds out that James Foster and David Luke, along with the former's RV, were slain and burned. The police officer finds a picture of Myron in a safe inside the burned-out RV, making her the main suspect in the double homicide investigation. Foster and David appear to be slain by Myron, despite Millen's inability to compile sufficient evidence to charge the journalist. It is evident from the journalist's photos that she has been keeping a watch on both fists, and it doesn't seem random that they are both killed around the same time. Myron must have killed David and Foster for their involvement in the child pornography website slide. Although she initially tries to find her rapists, the journalist must have realized that David and Foster are the bigger threats, since they have destroyed the lives of many by playing an important role in the operation of the pornography website. Rather than wasting her energy and time in a possibly fruitless search, Myron kills the duo also to ensure that they wouldn't threaten any other girl's life. The act of murdering them may have also given Myron a sense of relief, since they will not be able to produce more child Who is Laura Valdivia? Who sent her photo to Myron? Amaya's life is turned around by Myron's discovery of her, and she suddenly becomes famous. She also gains recognition as a writer, and the local press community begins to venerate her name. She receives a picture of a girl bound up in an anonymous package while she is at a reading of her book. The name Laura Valdivia next to the image identifies the youngster as Laura, who appears to be a kidnapping victim. The person behind the image is probably Laura's abductor because it was provided to Myron as a challenge. The attention and praise Myron received for finding Amaya's body may have wounded Laura's kidnapper's ego. He might want to see the journalist fail because it will give him more power as a criminal. Myron might take up the task and try to identify the abductor because Laura's condition appears to be deteriorating.